Hi everybody, welcome back to part two of Thursday Thoughts and I thought I'd share with you a few things growing in our yard. This is a salvia plant which I got part of from a neighbor and we put out by the mailbox and I don't know if you can see the bees but there are a number of bees. Maybe you can see them. And this makes me very happy because the bees have been struggling I think worldwide, but I know here in the U.S. there have been just too many pesticides used, and I'm so happy to see these guys doing well. I thought I'd share with you quickly. This is the little garden. So these are redwood dog, red twig dogwood trees. That in in here is where I planted just my few little plants at the beginning of the year. So these are the tomato plants that were savaged by storms and hornworms. And this one has had a recent problem of some sort because the leaves are very discolored. But I continue to get tomatoes from these guys. There's some a green one down here. And then that one is an early girl variety. And this one over here is the big beef steak and also still some tomatoes. So, uh, and there's some sort of, a, some, some sort of, uh, critter been chewing on there and then this was my cucumber plant but he has given up the ghost there is a tunnel under here so I'm not sure if it's a ground squirrel and then we have three pepper plants in the front and there's a bell pepper that's doing okay here and a serrano pepper over here and there are some budding tiny peppers begun on the third plant. So that was my initial garden and I'm going to continue tomato plants here next year in hopes of having somewhere for the hornworms to go. So let me show you my other little patch. This is the second little bed I put in. It has railroad ties around it and it is a raised bed. There's cardboard on the bottom underneath so that way you're not tilling and I just put in all new soil mixed with peat moss and horse manure and whatever I could get a hold of. So in the middle I have melons. That's a mixture of watermelon and Indiana rock melon. And there are a lot of flowers, but I haven't seen any melons budding yet. So I will need to learn from Carrie which are the female and which are the male flowers. So Carrie will continue that conversation. <laughs> then I put in too many uh, basil. I realize that's too many for this area, but uh, more sprouted than I had anticipated. And, and then that tomato plant is actually a cutting from one of the other tomato plants. And it just, uh, I put it in water and it kind of took off. So he has some tomatoes on him. So I think I will just see how all this does. I realize the basil are too close to the melons, but hopefully they can all get along and, and we'll see where we go. So just a tiny, garden compared to what many of you have, but I am enjoying it so much. Okay, I'm going to have to walk around. Hello again. I hope this is centered okay. Uh, with this camera, I don't believe I'm able to flip it around mid-video, and I don't know yet how to patch pieces of videos together, so... Welcome to part two. So I hope you enjoyed seeing my little garden patches and you all have inspired me to, to do more next year. So for the rest of this, I'm going to share just some general comments that some of you left from last week. And then I'm going to give some questions for next week and just talk a little bit about future topics. So. First of all, yes, you will continue to hear the cicadas and Sandy shared that she went on holiday in uh, Corfu in Greece and that the cicada sounds here are very similar to what she was hearing in Greece and it makes her remember happy times on that holiday. So it's nice to think that cicadas all around the world are singing. Sandy also said so this is gener just general comments, and again, thanks to all of you who have taken the time to leave so many beautiful comments. It really warms my heart every week. 
So she said, I love these videos. It's like a wellness break for me. You made my week with that. It really made me happy. This, this group has shared a lot of themselves and it's a delight getting to know each and every one of you and for you to get to know each other. Sandy also remembered, you know, last week we were talking about dupes of different scents and trends across vendors where they all start making kind of a, a fad of a given year. So Sandy remembered Blonde Moment. I forgot all about Blonde Moment. That's a beautiful fragrance. So I looked up the notes, iced champagne, red raspberry, and cranberry. And as a matter of fact, this year I had gotten a loaf of Blonde Moment that I shared with Joanne Gillick and I shared loaves. And one of those loaves had Blonde Moment in it. And I hadn't smelled it in a long time. <laughs> But that was all the rage maybe four or five years ago, wasn't it? Everybody was churning out Blonde Moment in the vendor, vendor wax world. And then I was melting something that Anne thought of another dupe we forgot to mention, which was Butt Naked. And the reason I thought of it was I was melting Calypso Melon from Destination Wax, and I thought, this smells just like skinny dipping from Scentsy. And then I looked on the scent description on the label from Destination Wax and she said it was butt naked type and I thought oh I forgot all about butt naked so that's honeydew melon granny smith apple strawberry and pear all together which is just gorgeous I love that so there was just another dupe so for those of you keeping track of the dupes there's a couple more for you um Carol mentioned, and Carol being the honest person that she is, Carol had talked last week about a term that I love called sniffer differ. When we don't agree, we all have a different take on maybe the same fragrance. And she called that sniffer differ, which I loved because certainly we don't all smell the same thing. We don't all like the same thing. And she said, uh, wait, don't give me credit for that. That comes from Lisa Roberry. So Lisa, if you're watching, thank you for that term. I love that. I don't know that I heard, heard you say that. And it's something I'd like to continue using. I really like that. That and nose greed from Deck Chair. Nose greed, when you just want more, you want another one today. The evening is young. I want another scent. I love these. So, Carol, thank you for being such an honest person because I would have attributed that to you always. And I still will, but I realize it, it's, uh, it's coming from Lisa. Let's see. Um, Oh, Carol. Carol also <laughs> said, nice catch saving your tripod last time. Yeah, I am. Um, sorry about the traffic noise. I, last time the wind caught my tripod and tried to knock the whole thing over. And I really try to avoid refilming these videos because it's, you know, it's meant to be conversational. It's meant to be an exchange between friends and the local traffic. And I don't, I, if I'm doing a, a like a, let's say I'm doing a warm review of, of a wax or talking about a candle or a warmer, sometimes, you know, I'll make a mistake and I'll, I will tape it over again because if it was, especially if it was something factual and I'll listen back to hear if the sound was okay and I'll think, oh no, you know, I said the wattage wrong, that has happened. I will certainly refilm that because it's, people are depending on facts to make decisions about what they may want to to a purchase for themselves. So it's important to get something like the wattage right. So if I misspoke, I will tape that over. But these, I never want to retape these because I, you know, I feel like it's, it's not going to be as natural the second time. If, I, if I'm repeating things that were heartfelt comments from people, I'd rather that just be the first take and, and you're, you're hearing it kind of fresh. I don't want that to be something that sounds rehearsed. So anyway, I was really happy when the tri <laughs> tri I never catch anything that's falling, but I managed to catch that last week. So Carol, thanks for the, for the nod there. Several of you mentioned my dad and, <laughs> and his various antics growing up in the Catholic Church. And I don't know how I ever got onto that. I have no idea. It was probably something about Christmas. Anyway, um, Meg said, my my grandfather was also a mischievous guy, and I can still hear his cackle when he'd be in trouble. Yes, when Dad would relate these stories from his misspent youth, he would he too would cackle. And then Deck Chair said, 
she remembers the big fans in the Catholic Church. She said their parish was not well to do, they didn't have air conditioning, and they had those enormous fans. And um, she remembers that, and she said, also said, I would have gotten along with your father, as I loved to pull pranks and enlisted my best friend, who actually may have been a normal girl if not for my bad influence. Dectier, I don't think you would be a bad influence on anybody. With that big heart, I don't think so. So some of you asked me to tell another dad story, so I will. I have one more from the Catholic Church. And I don't want you guys to get the impression that dad was always so ornery. You know, he, he um, was the most responsible of souls when he was an adult. But yes, he was a bit wily in his youth. So there was another one. So there was a, a visiting priest coming to their church. Same church, same Catholic church that Dad grew up in. And um, they were having a visiting priest. Now it was winter time. The last story was summertime. This one was winter time, and and uh, you know, the church did have have central heat. So this visiting priest was known to have really long sermons that he delivered in a monotone. So it was very long, and he would not so any signs of stopping. So Dad and his friend, and I don't recall the name of this friend, those were the two always in trouble together. They decided that they would, they'd heat him out. So they decided to close all the vents, all the, the heat ducts, the, the vents coming into the church, they closed them all off except the one that was right under the pulpit. So that way all the heat was coming up under this poor man who's trying to deliver his sermon in those heavy vestments and I guess they didn't sew the neck together this time. He's trying to deliver his sermon in that heat and they said the perspiration was just coming and he kept trying. So finally he did not deliver the last two pages of his sermon. He wound it up short because he felt faint from being so overheated. So once again, Dad was in trouble for this. He said they would call, my, my maiden name was Fisher. So they'd be, Fisher! They knew it was him. So I'll tell a good dad story next time. I mean, it shows another side of his personality. So a couple of you alluded to topics and um, well, first, let me share here what Jane said. I love this. Jane said, I could talk about my garden forever as I consider it my little piece of heaven on earth, and it's certainly our happy place. I think it's so important to spend time doing things you love, and seeing things grow before your eyes seems to lift your spirits. Isn't that true? It's a miracle. These tiny seeds, and then you have a huge plant that gives you something good to eat. So along with watching and contributing to our wonderful little group of wax addicts, I spend as much time as I can in my garden. I would echo that, Jane. Thank you for that. Rachel said, It's lovely that the weekly topics are branching out. I mean, there's no such thing as too much home fragrance, is there? but it's so interesting to hear what others around the world are up to. So this led me to think about, well, first of all, I want to ask you, is it okay with you if we veer into other topics? Because this week, everybody really embraced the, the gardening topic. This was a lot of fun hearing what all of you were growing and, and just how much you love it and what it brings to you and to your friends and loved ones. So. Is it okay if we go into other topics? So I, th I had some thoughts and I'd like to ask you again for other topics you might like to see this merry band venture into. And sorry, the fellow next door is doing some work so you're gonna hear a motor. Some topics I thought about would be other passions we have besides some fragrance, which I thought we might do for next week, so I'll come back to that. I thought about a topic could be who's a special person who made a difference in your life and why. We could talk about favorite recipes, favorite movies, favorite authors, 
bucket list types of things? What are some things you hope to do in your life? Um, favorite songs? Those were just a few I came up with. So, And we never really did do a dedicated week on candles. And we can come back to home fragrance. I'm sure we haven't exhausted everything, but I did think we had come to a point where it might be good to try some other some other ideas. So again, I and I do have still some some topics that might be additions to other topics that might not carry a whole week around home fragrance. Okay, so for next week I thought maybe if it's okay with you. Uh, what other passions or hobbies do you have beside home fragrance? And especially if it's something that you're passionate about. You know, a hobby can be something kind of contained, right? But I would love to hear other things that you're passionate about. When did you start? Is it something you do with other people? Like, if, are you in a musical group? Um, is it something that you've you've shared with others is that you make gifts or you, you you maybe you have a business that you sell other things so that would be for next week if that's if that's agreeable so my the two I'll put this in the description box but what other what else are you passionate about besides some fragrance and then some sub questions about that and then please would you give other topic ideas so as I have always said, we'll continue doing this as long as we have something to say. This group has really become dear to me. Uh, we're a, a merry band. And the thing that I cherish most, besides getting to know all of you, is that this group has, has really made an effort to lift each other up in a sometimes ragged world. And I thank you all for that. So until next time, I hope you all stay well, enjoy your gardens, and I'll see you next week. Take care. I'm going to have to walk around and turn this off, so I'll see if I can cut this off, but I'm not too good at editing. Bye for now.